Hi buddy, welcome to the Armageddon channel. My name's Alex Garner and today we are finally going to be finishing our little series on the uh, the restoration of our M16 half track. Now I know it's been about two years since we uh, actually posted the last video but that's because we ended up getting waylaid obviously with all the things that are happening in the world and mostly with our uh, jumbo tank that we've been working on so we weren't actually able to finish videoing this but we did actually finish it restoration wise so now it is looking lovely and it runs absolutely beautifully so today just going to quickly run over what we've done and talk a little bit about the history of this vehicle just to kind of uh, tie up any loose ends that you might have had so like i said this is the m16 half track it's actually a self-propelled anti-aircraft gun as you can tell by the uh, the 450 cal browning guns on the back um, now if you remember from the last video we actually got that quad mount moving and it it's actually quite fun. It's like being on a little bit of a roller coaster. Um, we will put a little bit of the footage just now so you can have a little bit of a look from the last time because it runs absolutely beautifully. Now, you might remember from the other two videos, when we uh, originally came to work on this, we were in part one, it was running all right, but we wanted just to give it a little bit of a kind of clean up, make it a little bit nicer, and just make sure it ran really smoothly, which now it really does. It is a lovely little thing to kind of ride around in. They made roughly three and a half thousand of this type, but in total of all the different variants, they made roughly about 53,000, I believe, of the actual half tracks. Now, again, lovely vehicles. With this one, we had to give it another quick uh, paint over and, like I said, just play with the engine a little bit. But now, again, it is running really, really nicely. You may remember from the earlier videos when we were driving it, it wasn't clunking so much, but the engine just needed a little bit of a clean up, making it a little bit nicer. And now it starts on the button. It is a really, again, I keep saying how much of a lovely vehicle it is, mainly because it is one of my favorite vehicles. Um, I don't know about you guys, but for me, whenever I see the half track, it is one of the kind of core World War II allied vehicles in, you know, with the Willys Jeep, the Sherman, the Greyhound, and then the half track, it is one of the main ones you think of. Created by the White Motor Company, it weighs roughly about 10 ton. It is about six meters long and it's about 2.2 meters wide. So it's quite a decent sized vehicle, which again is one of the reasons why it's one of the most popular vehicles that a lot of private collectors have, because as silly as it sounds, you could fit this in your garage relatively easier. A lot easier than the Sherman tank that you can see behind it. Um, so because of that, it's become one of the kind of staples of these military shows. If you ever go to them, you'll always see a few of these driving around. Now, it might not be the M16 variant with the, uh, the quad mount on top, but it might be any of the other kind, you know, the troop transport or any of those sort of vehicles. So we'll open up the hood so you guys can have a little bit of a look at the engine. It is quite heavy because, as you can imagine, it is armoured. But there we go, make sure that doesn't drop on my hand again. Um, but if you look inside here, it's actually a six cylinder uh, petrol engine. I believe it's about 128 horsepower and its top speed is about 40 miles per hour. So it, again, it's quite acceptable speed, I guess you could say. The vehicle itself holds about 230 litres of petrol and on that you've probably got about operational distance of about 175 miles, so quite a lot of distance really. Now, when we did a bit of work inside the engine, we, again, we didn't have to do too much, like I say, it was already running, um, but we did just have to do silly little things like replacing the spark plugs. With these vehicles you always find there's lots of little things you need to do just to make them run that little bit smoother. Although the half-track did see use all throughout the war, the actual M16 was used as anti-aircraft weapon in early 1945. On the 1st of January, the Germans launched Operation Bodenplatte, a massed attack on the Allied airfields in the Low Countries and France. This was an absolute disaster for the Luftwaffe, which lost a huge amount of pilots in an attack that had no real impact on the outcome of the war. The second and final major use of the M16 as an anti-aircraft weapon came in March 1945 after US troops captured the Lindendorf Bridge. The Luftwaffe made a series of attacks on the bridge and a number of the M16s took part in the determined American defence of the area. As the war came to an end, and especially after the war, aircraft obviously got a lot better. And you can imagine, as time went on, 450 cal machine guns aren't going to be able to cut down an airplane flying at God knows what sort of speed in the air. So near the end of the war, and especially afterwards, they started using these for a lot of ground troops. As you can imagine, 450 cal machine guns, they're going to make quite a mess of whoever's, whoever's running towards you. And it's part of the reason these doors here are actually able to come down. Now, I'm not going to be able to lift this on my own, it is quite heavy, but these do come up to here, so when you're shooting in the air, and when you want to shoot at something a bit lower down, these do pop on down just like so. 
Looking inside, you can see it now looks a lot nicer than what it did, especially in the earlier videos. Um, I believe, again, we've had a general tidy up in this area, uh, had a little play around with the dashboard. And as you can tell, I'm in the driver's seat right here. It drives relatively easily, exactly the same as, well, I guess you could say, a modern car. You've got your clutch, your brake, and your accelerator. A lovely vehicle to drive, especially on the road. Although it can get a little bit scary because obviously you've got the tracks behind you and wheels at the front, so it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't drive exactly the same as a car, but it does make for some lovely driving. Considering the vehicle only weighs about 10 tonnes, you'll see the tracks just here are actually relatively wide. They're about a foot wide, which for a vehicle of this weight isn't too bad. Um, by having these tracks and wheels at the front, it kind of made it the best of both worlds. So you could run on road relatively easily, but if you need to go off-road a little bit, you'd probably be all right and you'd be able to get through a lot of the stuff that other vehicles that are just wheel-based would struggle. The half-track family has seen use all over the world, from America to China, all the way up until the late 20th century. To give you an idea, I believe Honduras are still have, will still have about eight or nine of these in 1994. And even Mexico today, I believe, still has some of the M3 half-tracks in use. Now, before I go, I am just going to quickly show you guys some footage of this actually driving from when we did the restoration. But if you did enjoy the video, please do like and subscribe, and I hopefully see you guys in the next video. Thanks very much for watching, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please do like and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.